hope that uh, uh, they will expand their uh, mind around uh, some of these new ideas. And I think in the end, we'll come up with something that uh, Alaskans will be proud of. Austin Baird from KTUU again. Speaker, are you moving uh, finance subcommittees and everything else at a pace where we'll finish it 90 days? And do you think it might just be more helpful to operate on uh, the assumption it'll be 120 days or more? Well, we're working on the pace of getting things done in 90 days. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the House Finance Committee is uh, where they should be at this time of uh, the mid part of the session. Um, I would say that they are very much on track to uh, getting uh, the operating budget uh, uh, completed and onto the House floor. And, um, you know, really at about the same timeline as we did last year and in, in, in previous years. Um, clearly, the, the challenge of, of taking decisive action this year on the fiscal plan um, are, uh, are pretty significant. Um, and so whether we get that done in 90 days, it's certainly our intention to move in that direction. Can't speak for the Senate, but I've heard uh, uh, from them that they'd like to see the same done. Um, and honestly, if it takes going over a little bit uh, in order to do the right thing for the future of Alaska, personally, I'm prepared to do it. Uh, you know, again, we've, you know, we've formed this coalition around taking the, the making the tough decisions. And, uh, to me, the important thing is we make the right decisions uh, for uh, the future of the state and not be tied to uh, an 90-day period. Although I can tell you, I'd love to be home on the 91st day, <laughs> just like everybody else. Um, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatches. I, I had two um, questions about two pieces of legislation. I'm, I'm wondering uh, if if we could hear from each of you um, whether you a support the um, proposals from representative from Representative Seaton uh, to reduce the school bond debt reimbursement, and also if you support the income tax provision of HB 115. <clears throat> well, that's a two-part question. So the first part, uh, being the school bond debt reimbursement, everything's on the table right now. And uh, right now we're just going through um, proposals. Um, you know, one of the unique things that we have with this uh, uh, with our co-chairs of finance is sometimes we don't we don't find out about this stuff until it hits the floor he's being very transparent putting on the table now for people to comment and uh, it's uh, going to be the will of uh, the house on determining on whether or not the school bond debt reimbursement stays in um, whether it gets cut um, but it, but it's on the table and we're we're actively listening and want the public's input on whether that's the right direction or not on uh, House Bill 115, um, I think it's, it's still in the evolution process. It's still evolving. And, uh, uh, but so far, I like, I like the work that the, the Finance Committee is doing on that. And uh, as, if, as in any idea, um, that idea is, is going to be refined and through everybody else's input. So it's progressing quite along nicely. Uh, personally, I don't want to see any cuts to education, um, but we are having to look at uh, cuts in our budget. That's one of the things that we're looking at is, is, uh, uh, is uh, further targeted reductions. And um, um, if we can hold schools harmless, that is uh, my, my preference. I think I'd add to that that to uh, uh, the co-chairs of the House Finance uh, Credit, they've broken out the operating budget in sort of sections, so you can now... You know, the general public can actually go and see what we're talking about here as opposed to sort of folding all that into a very big document where it's very difficult to uh, you know, have any traceability. Um, and as uh, the majority leader said, um, all that is very fluid at this point. So we're going to listen to the public. We've got uh, public testimony Thursday, Friday, and over the weekend on Saturday up in House Finance Committee. And if we hear uh, overwhelming opposition uh, to this from the, the general public, we're going to react accordingly. Um, regarding House Bill 115, um, you know, nobody said the new revenues aspect of a fiscal plan was going to be easy. Um, we just had a question moments ago about education, head tax. Uh, there may be other ideas that, that come forward. But our coalition uh, looks at this uh, relative to here we are in calendar year 2017. Next year is an election year. We all know historically it's very difficult to get uh, uh, major initiatives that are controversial through an election year. So if we don't get things done here in 2017, are we in fact kicking the can down to calendar year 2019, which would be fiscal year 2020? 
can we afford to do that? Can we afford to put a plan together that, that relies primarily on the price of oil going forward or on the performance of the stock market? Uh, you know, w w we don't think so. We think we need to, to take those decisive steps this year and uh, to build on the momentum. Clearly, there's a, a, a more momentum being built around the state, uh, being generated, uh, in terms of asking the legislature to take decisive action this session. Um, you know, we, we want to capitalize on that. Uh, we've been steadfast from day one. That's what we're formed around. And, and the two bills, uh, the two items that you brought up are, are key pieces of it. But, uh, you know, we're at the halfway point of the session. And um, uh, again, uh, lots of debate going on all these issues. Uh, Steve Quinn with Bloomberg. Can you please talk a little bit about your decision to hire Rich Ruggiero? Sure. Um, <laughs> You know, since I've been here in 2013, uh, I've been mostly impressed by the experts that have been hired. Um, uh, Janik Meyer, if I've got his name right, I may be mistaking him for a tennis ball. Uh, sorry, sorry, a tennis, a tennis uh, player. I'm looking at a tennis ball. Uh, that'll go down in the annals. But Janik Meyer and Nikos Safos, my apologies, Janik Meyer and Nikos Safos uh, were were both very impressive. And um, I, uh, you know, I, I had no particular problem with either of them. Um, I would say that it was important that we uh, get away from a single mold, though, and look at other options. And so I think that's what the Legislative Budget and Audit Committee did. And, um, you know, so I, I think that part of the idea was to uh, find some other uh, expertise and some broader views, and that's why we hired a Rich Ruggiero. Liz Rains with KTVA again. Going back to the topic of the school bond debt reimbursement, we heard a lot from municipalities last year when it was cut that it was hard for them to um, shoulder that new burden and that it was, there were big impacts for them. Um, this is a big cut that's being proposed uh, in, in the finance uh, committee right now. So how do you, I guess, find that balance? We hear a lot of focus this session on the economy and how do you find that balance in trying to solve the state's uh, financial problem um, b between sh shouldering costs with the municipalities and the impacts that we could see to the economy that way. You know, I, I, if I can take this, I wanted to comment because it because uh, Nat has asked a, a sort of similar question about the school bond debt reimbursement. You know, the thing I would say about Co-Chairman Seaton is this: he is one of the great intellects although he has a variety of backgrounds in, in uh, you know, maritime trade, et cetera. But he's one of the great minds in the building. And frankly, if there were 60 of him, we would not have a $3 billion deficit, and we would be done on April the 17th. That's what would happen. So I applaud his leadership. My preference would not be to have a school bond debt reimbursement cut. Uh, and I think that there are other ways to achieve balance without doing that. But I understand that he, you know, he takes the position that this needs to be aired. Um, and we'll see what the response is during the uh, open public testimony. Becky Bohr with AP for the speaker. What is your expectation for um, all of those subcommittee recommendations that dealt with statutory changes? My understanding is it's going to be up to the standing committees but there are a lot of those in contained in the subcommittee reports. So where do we go from here? Well, obviously the process uh, is new this year. So we're working out uh, a few bugs along the way. And uh, uh, what uh, uh, I'm, I'm really encouraged by is the, the involvement of these standing committees in, uh, at the, the budgetary level and uh, really developing uh, a more working, more sort of intimate uh, understanding of the agencies that they directly oversee, the Resources Committee, for example, with DNR and, and so on. Um, and so those changes that need to come down the pike in terms of statutory changes, um, I think those committees will be better prepared to, to take on. And uh, you know, I can't speak, and perhaps I'll, I should yield here to the co-chairs of the Resources Committee to give you a more specific response. But uh, but I, I do know, talking to other uh, uh, chairs of committees, that uh, 
that uh, they're encouraged uh, by sort of you know uh, being more empowered to, to make these changes, be part of the budgetary process, which is very large as we know. And uh, so I fully expect that uh, we'll have more committee action, and then next year, uh, having a year under our belt, uh, this process uh, I think is going to be a little bit more well-oiled and a little bit more um, sort of efficient, if you will, with uh, having that additional year under our belt. Well, and I can just add from the Resources Committee, for example, Representative Guttenberg has several amendments that were um, identified through the indirect expenditures report and some sort of outdated credits. It may be appropriate that, that some of those measures could go into whatever bill comes out of our committee because it will be you know, related to credits already. And so we can um, definitely take a look at those. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to add on the budget subcommittee process this year, we've had a lot of dialogue. A lot of really good dialogue that I haven't heard before. Before, years past, it was just a process, you know. Everybody just had to begrudgingly sit through, and, and it was led up to, it was mostly um, the um, budget subcommittee chairs who, who determined the direction that we were going to go, and with little or sometimes no input from minority members. Um, but I really appreciate the ongoing dialogue that we've been happening, have been happening, been happening because uh, we have been coming up with some, uh, um, great fiscal um, solutions as well as uh, policy um, recommendations. You know, I, and I think that's that's really an important point. And the legislative information offices around the state have been more involved in the subcommittee process because uh, they're being covered uh, uh, during uh, daylight hours, uh, gavel to gavel. For the most part, I think is present. Uh, you know, they're being. Uh, uh, documented and what I've been hearing is that the transparency factor with the budget process really is is uh, so much different this year going forward and you know whenever you try a new uh, a process new system there's always uh, wrinkles to be ironed out and uh, this is this is no different Andrew Kitchenman Alaska Public Radio Network uh, the <coughs> Senate majority uh, introduced its uh, uh, restructuring bill that includes a spending limit and I was interested in your thoughts on the spending limit well this the spending limit um, and I've not been able to study Senate bill 70 I've uh, certainly perused it and I've been aware of its contents uh, listen to the Senate majority press conference but the the, the spending limit uh, seems uh, similar to what was in Senate bill 128 if uh, memory serves, and I think that's a product of uh, state affairs last year, uh, then Senator Stoltz, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and it's uh, set up so that uh, you know oil revenues essentially re reach $1.2 billion. The, the money thereof or anything more would be split 75% going to uh, state spending and 25% to uh, uh, the, the dividend. Um, that's uh, not part of our plan. I think that's pretty clear. We don't have a spending cap in our, our plan as well. And uh, our, our plan dedicates 33% of what's called the POMV, or you know, essentially taking the permanent fund and turning it into an endowment, takes 33% of, of those earnings and applies it towards a permanent fund dividend versus the 25% that the Senate proposes. So uh, we think our plan is advantageous in uh, that regard. But the other elements of the <coughs> Senate's plan, I think, are um, going to undergo discussion in Senate finance. Uh, if they have merit, uh, perhaps that's something that we would incorporate uh, into our plan uh, on this, uh, the House side. Uh, we, we don't know yet. Um, but uh, again, to me, the, the, the bigger question is looking out for the long-term future of the state. That, to me, is, is the bigger question in all of this. Liz Rains with KTVA again. Uh, Speaker, you'd mentioned trying to get all of the pieces of the fiscal plan passed this year because of next year's election, but history has shown that we, the, the state can, legislature can pass oil tax legislation in even in election years. Is that a piece that could wait then? Well, our intent is to get it passed this session. Let me just respond to it that way. Um, uh, you know, uh, in, in previous years during election cycles, um, again, it's more difficult to get uh, omnibus controversial bills through. I think we've, we've seen that. Last session, we succeeded with a, a crime bill, very contentious crime bill, uh, a health care bill that was uh, less contentious, but uh, equally uh, sort of complicated from policy perspective. You know, next year um, uh, is not an ordinary election year because we have uh, the governor up for re-election, and that's going to introduce uh, uh, additional elements into sort of the, the political equation. I'm not punting the ball uh, uh, down the road uh, in terms of saying we're not going to get uh, major things done next year. 
that's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying that uh, this year the focus is on, on getting uh, the four pillars of the majority coalition's uh, plan into um, motion, and uh, we're going to be, you know, we're going to stay focused on that. However, Liz, I might add that last year, <laughs> you know, the reason I think we're revisiting this oil and gas tax credit issue is because last year was an election year, you know, and the pressure of just getting something done, you know, led to what passed. I think, you know, the measures that the reason they look familiar, it's the unfinished work from last year. So, you know, we have the luxury of a little more time right now. And our goal is to you know, do something, you know, a little bit different, slow things down a little bit. And, and that's the dynamic that changes, you know, when you have the full, the full year like we have right now and even going forward. But um, we're really committed to working really hard right now. And, you know, hopefully people feel like they have the space to explore all the options and, and we'll be able to come up with a good compromise. Um, Nat Hurz with Alaska Dispatch News. What are the chances that um, we're here again in July um, at, at a similar sort of impasse that we were last year? I would hope those chances are remote. And I, I use the word hope because uh, all of us that, uh, that were here over the course of May, June, July last year uh, were here very reluctantly. Um, and uh, uh, my relationship with uh, my counterpart, Senate President Kelly, uh, is a very good relationship. Uh, we have both agreed that uh, we're going to talk regularly, and uh, amidst any sort of policy differences we might have, that, uh, it's, that uh, we've agreed that it's very important to keep uh, a regular and consistent dialogue going, and uh, you know, I expect that to be a really critical part of uh, the whole uh, sort of debate going forward. Um, the difference from last year to this year, in my view, is that the resolve to restructure the permanent fund, I think, is sort of universally held, whereas last year it was a very much an open question as to whether that was something that, uh, you know, the majority of legislators wanted to do. Uh, restructuring the permanent fund is the major piece of a fiscal plan going forward. Um, the other pieces, uh, perhaps maybe more controversial in nature, maybe more difficult from a political perspective, uh, we're going to work through those differences. And uh, the important part and the thing that uh, heartens me is that uh, we have a very good dialogue going, despite what might be uh, you know, the public's impression or what might be in the media or what's being reported day to day. Uh, a lot of people are very committed uh, down here in Juneau to doing what's right for the state. It's just that at this point, at the halfway uh, juncture of the session, we might have a different view on how, how to go about making that happen. Can you point to any can you point to any sort of areas where you know the, the Senate and the House came into the session with different ideas, and now that we're at the halfway point, there's been you know you guys are already have reached some kind of compromise, or or do you think does that not exist yet? That we've reached compromise on? Yeah, where where you know one side has come around to the other side's point of view. Well. Um Again, we're at the halfway point of the session, so a lot of things are very much, you know, in the midway stream, formative stages and whatnot. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll go back to the fact that uh, all four of us up here, along, you know, uh, our, our coalition as a whole, um, uh, you know, we're determined to, uh, uh, as the majority leader spoke about, take good ideas and bring them forward. And uh, you had questions earlier about what's in the Senate's proposal, the Senate Bill 70. Uh, maybe some of those ideas will rise to the surface in the House. I'd, and we'll take them under consideration and perhaps, you know, sort of co-champion them. But at this point, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's differences out there, but we're talking on a regular basis. I'm encouraged, um, and I think uh, when this is all said and done, uh, we'll have done the right thing for the long-term future of the state. So with that, uh, Mike, I think I would like to thank you all. Appreciate you being here this morning, and we'll see you uh, next week, same place, same time. <clears throat> I mean, they did just introduce us.